There you are. Welcome once more, good chums. Before we begin, a word of warning. Unlike the Aspects, we have yet to receive official word on the exact nature of the classes. Instead, this presentation is a gathering of years of research, taken on by those with a passion for knowledge regarding the system's canonical text. Though many will surely disagree with some details, I hope it serves as a worthy introduction to the system that allows most of you viewing to participate in the wider conversation from now on. To that end, rest assured that if future information renders these descriptions obsolete or inaccurate, I will be quick to inform you on this very stage. But until then, it pleases me to announce that to go along with the canonical test for your true sign and aspect, my good friend Wakraya has developed a fan-made test to determine one's class. I must stress, this test is not official or canonical, and provides only a temporary measure until Wak Pumpkin develops a canonical test. Until then, we merely hope it proves a useful tool for your pleasure, as together with the extended zodiac it will allow you to guess at a completed picture of your own heroic potential. I am certain that potential is there. You see, I believe in you, my good friends. May our efforts assist you on your journey to understanding your true self. Finally, do be advised that from this point onwards, comments and responses regarding these videos may be collected from all of my social media and presented again in follow-up comments response videos. I hope this will enable us to carry out a more structured and lasting conversation from subject to subject, as our understanding continues to evolve. Naturally, patrons will receive a slight advantage through their ability to contact me directly on Patreon, but don't let that stop you from reaching out elsewhere. I'll be happy to present interesting points and questions from wherever they come. That's all for now. Let's return to the matter at hand. The work of our friend and inspiration, Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung. Besides Gnosticism, the father of analytical psychology established several concepts you might recognize from pop culture, like the persona and the shadow. He also recontextualized the Gnostic world of ideas as the collective unconscious, an element of the subconscious mind that connects all people. From this collective unconscious, he believed patterns of potential he called archetypes would emerge in the minds of cultures and individuals, universally and eternally, again and again. These archetypes would then be contextualized by culture, adding specific symbols that render the pattern into more specific examples of its source. This includes patterns of behavior people might engage in, with mythic figures acting as the ultimate ancestral role models. In this sense, archetypes are a little like platonic ideas for kinds of people, and indeed, Jung considered Plato an influence. In 1991, Dr. Carol S. Pearson adapted Jung's archetypes into a system similar to the MBTI, with 12 such archetypes describing different kinds of mythic heroes. It seems likely Andrew was influenced by these as he developed the 12 classes, but it doesn't exactly seem like he simply copy-pasted the archetypes from Pearson's model into his system. Instead, he remixed them, condensing the 14 classes into 7 pairs, each linked to a verb that describes how they interact with their aspect, and an archetype archetype that lets us know what classes are paired while fleshing out their abilities. The pairings are divided into active and passive versions of the archetype, reflecting the Taoist concept of yin-yang. So while paired classes will use the same verb, they have some key differences. Active or yang players tend towards exploiting or using their aspect to benefit themselves, while passive or yin players tend to allow or invite their aspect to act through them to benefit others. Yang and yin also carry over to more general personality traits. Active players tend to be more proactive and self-driven, while passive players tend to be more reactive and group-driven. However, tend is the operative word. 
Central to Yin Yang is the idea that all things change between Yang and Yin depending on the context, and as complex and nuanced people, a player might flip any element of the dichotomy in the right situation. So we can sometimes see active players acting to benefit others, or passive players making direct use of their aspect. Class alignment does suggest which state of being the hero is happiest and most comfortable with, as well as what kind of behavior might come naturally to them. This tendency to shift between active and passive states is the final thing that sets classes apart. The classes exist on an active-passive spectrum, with the master classes Lord and Muse as the most active and most passive, respectively. The rest of the classes have matching verbs, creating quartets of classes with their own existential contrasts. The more intense the verb's effect on reality is, the more active or passive the classes in the quartet will be. So Maid and Prince are some of the most active classes, while Sylph and Bard are some of the most passive. We can see this reflected in the way the heroes of these classes shape Homestuck's narrative. Players of all four classes tend to stick to either active or passive states for very long spans of time. They tend to be somewhat inflexible, either abstaining from action entirely or are taking very dramatic action all at once, with very little middle ground. They also find it incredibly stressful to adopt their opposing alignment. As a result, they tend to either keep out of the spotlight entirely as they quietly allow the story to continue, or dominate the plot completely with the sheer impact of their actions. This stark divide is lessened for the Servant Steel classes, whose verbs conflict but can somewhat coexist, and it's almost non-existent for the Change in No classes, whose verbs are practically interdependent. What these classes lose in direct impact, they gain in flexibility instead. That describes the base of the hero title system, but believe it or not, there's more. Jung believed archetypes manifested in the instinctual behavior of individuals, but they could also be actualized when they enter consciousness as images. Homestuck uses both approaches simultaneously, presenting the latter through an additional game mechanic we'll call live action roleplay. While each character has an innate class that describes the behavior through which they're most effective, they're also exposed to archetypes through the ancestral figures they look up to, or simply through their individual interests. If the interest in the archetype is intense enough, they will sometimes imitate the behavior and verb of the corresponding class through roleplay. Sometimes, a controlling force will even make a character adopt a particular role limiting their self-expression and personal desires. On top of that, while each player has an innate aspect, we're told that a player resistant enough to their true calling or corrupted by outside forces could manifest their abilities as a different aspect entirely too. This creates an additional layer stacked on top of the structure the hero titles already give us. This remarkable degree of complexity, drawing upon established fields of existential and humanist philosophy, is what draws fans to the hero title system and makes it an appealing way to understand Homestead's characters, characters from other stories, and in many cases, even ourselves. Phew! That just about explains how a player's hero title will describe their behavior. If you're feeling overwhelmed, don't worry. You don't need to follow everything right now since I'll explain each class, aspect, and archetype more thoroughly as we move along. Having the system laid out like this even means I could start doing fun videos on random characters and other works of fiction, potentially even as requests through patron reward tiers. Let me know if that sounds interesting to you. I'll definitely do it if the demand is there. If you like what I'm doing here and you want to see more of it, feel free to support me on Patreon. Doing so seriously helps me out and gets you access to cool perks, including access to the Discord server where the concepts for these videos are threaded together from the hairs of 10,000 gay wizard beards. You can also find me on the Archive Swap Reddit and Discord. See you again soon, everyone. Keep rising.